Welcome back to the Caps on Sports Podcast. My name is Tyler Blumenstick, joined by Nick Tobias, Anthony Mano, and Sam Meehan. It is week 15 of the NFL season. We are bringing you easy money, make the case, and breakdowns on every single primetime game. Who's got something for me? Come on. I, was I would just like to uh, thank Dan Bailey for missing all his field goals and uh, letting me have uh, Buccaneers minus six and a half. He's a great man. I would, uh, like to, uh, I would like to uh, express my displeasure with Jarvis Landry for running <laughs> the back of the end zone where we all could have been happy with plus three. You know, would have ended my week, I think, three, five, and one. You know, not, not good at all, but not the worst thing ever, but – that was just kind of, you know, the nail in the coffin. It was a terrible week for myself. And I tend to bounce back after a bad week. So stay tuned. Mm. Yeah. All right. Well, bad weeks. I would like to uh, – sorry, yeah, I'm going to wrap it. Go for you're, it. You're speaking of bad weeks here. I'd like to congratulate FanDuel Sportsbook for getting 250 of my beans that I worked hard for and I earned <laughs> nothing off of it. Um, you are now $250 richer. You could thank me because I am stupid. Very nice. New week points. Nick, Nick likes to eulogize his dollar bills on the Caps on Sports podcast. <laughs> I worked hard for that money, man. You did. You did. I work hard for it. Should we pour one out for all the lost bets this week? I I'll, have do the- it. I'll do it right now. I got nothing left to pour out. <laughs> yeah, just so you guys know, check out the social medias. Caps on Sports on everything. This is a nice little mid-episode plug. You got Bro, a little everything, Caps on Sports dude. on Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and of the dot com variety, um, Sam. Uh, <laughs> Sam did a shooby. We are an organization. Dot organization. You say shooby, a shooby. Why do you want to call it? A shooby, no shooby, shooby. You drink alcohol out of a shoe, regardless of what it is. Don't know what you're All talking right. about. All right, Thursday night football. Yeah, this is a cool little week. We have Saturday games this week. Two of them. I think what like a four thirty start and an eight o'clock start, and then we mm. also have. That is correct. Thursday, Sunday, and Monday, as usual. And we're going to kick it off also, as usual, with the L.A. Chargers visiting the Las Vegas Raiders on Thursday night. Uh, 8.20 yeah. start, three-point favorites, the Las Vegas Raiders. Uh, 53.5 on the total. What do you guys got for this one? Um, all right, since someone's speaking and Sam's just pointing upward, I'm going to talk <laughs> about the teams that are playing. Um, the Los Angeles Chargers quarterback, Justin Herbert, has regressed phenomenally, only scoring a total of zero points last week against the New England Patriots in a very bad outing. Um, Can you Las phenomenally Ve- regress? Is that, he, is that he, actually, he actually scored 20 points last week against uh, the uh, Falcons and won the game. Okay, so two weeks ago, he scored zero points <laughs> against the New England Patriots. Last week, he led the team to a last-second victory that the Atlanta Falcons actually, I think, coughed up, if I'm not mistaken. The Las Vegas Raiders just fired their defensive coordinator, Paul Gunther, I believe, early, uh, later last week after they couldn't get anything done. I'm going to take the Raiders here. Yeah, well, All right, I'm, Nick, I'm not going to take the Raiders here. Yeah. No, let me tell you why. Time. I'll be taking the Chargers. Oh, wait. Um, Sorry, Sam, but Raiders minus three, because I think that's the line. That's what I'm going to take it at. Yes. Um, Chargers plus three. Um, the Raiders have fallen off in the past four weeks. So they got – Wait, wait, wait. At- have you not been watching the Los Angeles Chargers play football? They're coming off a win. Yeah. Have you watched the Raiders play football recently? Yeah, they did beat the New York football Jets. Yeah, on a last-second last touchdown, because Greg Williams wanted to go cover zero all-out blitz on a Hail Mary play. <laughs> And there's also, um, they got their ass kicked by Atlanta, 43-6. And this past week, they were competitive for maybe for like the first half against Indy, and the second half, got their ass kicked again. They are on the decline. They have not looked good. This happened last year, too, where they started the year out good and then just fell apart down the stretch. The Chargers, Herbert coming off, he did play a solid game for 250 and two touchdowns. And I think he will pick apart this – Blackluster Raiders defense. I'm with so, you, Sam. Chats is plus three and the over. That's my bigger play. I like the over more than the spread itself. Because none of these teams are particularly very good defensively. Despite having, having a pretty good week last week, causing turnovers on, from the Falcons, Chargers did. But um, these Derek Carr is going to be able to take care of the ball. Both teams are going to score a lot. I would like. I would love a nice, high-scoring, 
uh, close game on Thursday. So, I'm nice. gonna, I like the, on, uh, before you go, I'm going to combat that. I do like the under here. Um, I do think Anthony Lynn is trying to lose his job and he's not going to play a smart <laughs> game at all. Um, I all honest right. to God Fair think enough. that Anthony Lynn is trying not to coach the Los Angeles Chargers anymore. The Chargers actually have a very decent defense with big names on it. They just haven't really got it done all year. I think injuries is, too. I think this is a game where they kind of show out and they kind of hold, they hold down uh, Derek Carr a little bit. They can force some turnover. So I do like the under here. Anthony Lynn's getting fired after this week. I'm just telling you. <laughs> Could have said that ten I, times I like, this year, honestly. I think, I think the uh, I think the move here is probably is I, I like the Ra- uh, the Raiders here, uh, but like Sam said, the over is ten and three in Raiders matchups. Hold on, I'm just looking at my notes. But those last three losses have came fairly recently. Two in the past. four what is that five two in the past five weeks but 10 and three and uh, they like to score points give me the over in that uh sam i think you're making that your your lock but yeah give me the raiders raiders i'm going to hop in the boat with sam here um i, I don't love time. this i really don't love it at all i know it's a thursday night game so it's the only thing that's going to be on to watch aside from college basketball which shameless plug check out the cap rack Every or not almost every trust morning. the model. Trust the model. Uh, hmm. Yeah, check out the cap rack every morning. It's on the same platforms as this podcast: YouTube, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. So do that. Um, but back into my pick. Yeah, I just don't like the Vegas Raiders right now. I mean, this game screams Raiders sneaky cover at the end because it's John Gruden Why? at home in prime time against a really bad head coach who literally could not get a field goal or a playoff. I don't know what he wanted to do last game, but right before halftime, I don't I think it, he wanted to get the Raiders sound better stick. Keep doing it. What do you mean? <laughs> no, I'm taking the chargers. I'm saying this game should go the way of the Raiders, but it's not because of the Justin Herbert factor. And I need him. Mano doesn't, doesn't want him because Mano will lose his fantasy week. If Justin Herbert goes off. Um, but yeah, look, I, I, I just feel like this is a Chargers win. I'm not convinced either way. I just feel like this is a game the Chargers win in Vegas on Thursday night. Yeah, you could sprinkle it. Sprinkle the money line, baby. I, I don't know. Like, I, I don't want to bet this game. I don't want to touch it. I'm going to. We talked I, about I, it. I, 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 I do actually. I, I like the Chargers a lot. If, if you're if asking overall, me – if yeah, I was going to say, if you're asking right? me not to bet on a Thursday night primetime football game, then you're stupid. That's fine. With an over under of 53, like it's going to be a decently high scoring game. At least that's what it's projected to be. It's going to be an entertaining watch. And I think entertaining watches make for last second covers, right? Last second finishes. So I see where you're coming from, Stick. I just last think Vegas is a better team. I don't even know your if it's going to necessarily safeties. be that. I could definitely <laughs> see a strong case for the under here. I could see a very sloppy run filled game, check down filled game. Do you see what they're using Eckler for now? I mean, not that they're using for like using him for that now because he's been like that his whole career. But you know why? It's short game and it's chewing the clock. Anthony and... Lynn wants to get fired. He doesn't know how to use Justin. <laughs> no, 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 no. Williams because now, now, now that's where I don't. That's where I disagree. Because Austin Eckler is a weapon to be used on offense. You're not throw, You're not giving him ten receptions a game and fifteen to twenty carries to well, lose he's the game when down. he's getting that's, that production. That's, that means Herbert's not looking down the field. He's not making his proper progressions. That's he all. Is, it though because Keenan Allen had had a pretty good game last week. Okay, that's all he throws the balls to, Keenan Allen. I, I, d- I disagree, right, and right, I digress. All right, all right, all right digress, digress. Let's move on. Let's move, Let's move on. on. All right. Um, it is important to note that Mike Williams, Austin Eckler, and Keenan Allen were all que- are all questionable tomorrow. Um, they're going to play. Brian Balaga is they're out, play. and Sarah Adderley is doubtful. That's just on the, the Chargers side. Um, Eckler Josh, better play. Josh Jacobs is probably going to play for the Las Vegas Raiders. They might get back. Yeah, but he's going to post that he's not. <laughs> That was funny. That was, that was funny. funny. That was funny. Okay, let's move on to easy money for the week. Um, anybody want to kick it off? I don't really. Yeah, I can, well, uh, I can, oh, okay. I, I, I'm going to talk about both. How about this? Saturday. I'll slot myself in for second. You can go first. <laughs> All right, well, I'm slotting myself in for Saturday, a little bit of Saturday special here since nobody's going to talk about Saturday night, Saturday football games. We didn't say nobody. I what we did say, say was you can – Okay, fair enough. If you fair want. enough. Well, I'm going to talk about both Saturday games here because they are both prime time. And when was the last time we had a Saturday game? Probably sometime last year. Um, we have Buffalo Bills at the Denver Broncos. Year. 
yeah, probably. There you go. Um, I'm going to go contrary. And I was talking about taking the Buffalo Bills in the beginning. And now I think I'm actually going to take the Broncos. And this is mainly because um, last week the Buffalo Bills beat the Pittsburgh Steelers by a, by 11 points, which is their widest margin of victory this year. Um, every other game has come pretty much to a touchdown, maybe less. Um, they're playing in mile high. Drew Locke did play well next week. Do I, do I trust Drew Locke? Absolutely not. Is this a, a pick just to make a pick? You're absolutely right. So I'm going to take Denver plus six and a half here. Um, I think they keep it within a touchdown for whatever reason. And I don't think Buffalo's defense is that legit. They kind of played well against the Pittsburgh Steelers who aren't really that good on the offensive side of the football. Um, I'm going to take the Denver Broncos plus six and a half. And then I'm going to piggyback it right next to it. It's going to be Carolina at Green Bay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take the underdog again and take Carolina plus eight and a half. Hmm. Um, I think Carolina has a good chance to keep this game close. Uh, They're getting DJ Moore back. No, they're not going to have Christian McCaffrey, but Mike Davis is also a stud. You get DJ Moore, you have Curtis Samuel, you have um, Robbie Anderson. They have enough firepower to keep up with the, the Green Bay Packers who don't have a defense. I'm going to take Carolina Planthers plus eight and a half, and that's my Saturday special. The Saturday special. A little bit of two dogs. Can I get action. fries and a drink with that? Uh, you get two You get two hot dogs because they're both – You get a barf bag dogs. with that. You get, you get two dogs <laughs> and a side of chili cheese fries. Okay. And those two picks. And those two picks for five ninety nine. Yeah, you can keep those. Five ninety nine. I'll go to Costco, Nick. Thanks. Uh, that's your problem. <laughs> you got to make sure you buy a membership for that first. This one you don't need a membership. No, you, you just one. need to listen. All right. right. Sorry. Go ahead. Easy money. Go ahead, fellas. <laughs> All right. I am going to slot in my easy money pick. I have two. Uh, one's going to be my make the case. One's going to be my easy money. It's just a matter of which way I want to rank them per se for the segment. Um, All right. For easy money, I'm going to go with the Kansas City Chiefs minus three on the road That's at the- New Orleans. I don't know what's wrong with this line. And I'm just playing with you, by the way. This is the easiest freaking game you're ever going to see in your, your life. I don't know yeah. why this line is the way it is. Because they're not sure if Drew Brees is playing. I don't care I don't think if it matters. Drew Brees is playing or not. These are the Kansas City Chiefs we're talking about. We've been lauding the Miami Dolphins, and albeit they made a good comeback last week. They made a pretty good comeback after getting punched I have, in the mouth. I have something to say about that once you're done go with that. Go for it. No, well, I want you, oh, go. you want me to keep going? All right, fine. Yeah. I, I feel like every time I make a case to bet the Chiefs, my only reason is they're the Kansas City Chiefs, and they're just so explosive. And under normal circumstances, describing a team that isn't the Chiefs, you'd probably be like, hey, you run a podcast. You should probably be giving the people the relevant information, maybe some stats, and not just saying, hey, that team's explosive. But no, because the Kansas City Chiefs are a absolutely explosive team, a team that we haven't seen in a while. Um, and this New Orleans team is coming off a 24-21 to loss to the Philadelphia Eagles, who are a bad football team. Although I do like Jalen Hurts. It's fine. It's not part of this pick. I'm not going to talk about it. Um, this line's way too low. Taysom Hill is kind of showing why he isn't a full-time quarterback, kind of not keeping that offense up to speed, not really sharing the ball. I don't know. They're not moving the football very well. They scored 21 and 21 back-to-back weeks. That's it. Against bad, this is, this bad is defense. I'm sorry. So, I hate what, to jump in. I hate, I'm just going to be real quick, but these lines make me nervous. We it's talk easy. About I'm not lines. nervous at all. You we know talk about the these City lines are. almost every week. And almost every week we talk about an easy line that's just like, why is a line like this? This is so screwed. easy. This is so well, easy. Uh, Wasn't well, New Orleans easy money last week against the Philadelphia Eagles who were hey, – relax. I'm going to give you another pick later <laughs> that's easy, but I can't include in this segment. So, There's only two options. Here I, I kind of noticed something that – with the Chiefs that really does concern me with their playoff push. This team has is starting to show symptoms of a bad disease, which is not being able to close out games. We're seeing it twice in the past three weeks. What did <laughs> where they no, where they go up big and they just can't close and then people let them crawl back in. That's not good. They're not gonna be able to go up 20 fucking points in like say no the H championship game or whatever. You know, they there's inability to like hold these big leads. Like last week against they let Miami scrap the way back. Two weeks ago they were up twenty one nothing before you could blink against Tampa and that game was a Tampa cover <laughs> when they covered three and a half points, twenty four twenty one. So that's why I mean the three points like 
all right, that's no matter how big of a lead you have, like you'll probably still get that regardless of how big of a lead you can blow. But just even just moving forward, this team that that's a concern for me. And with with a defense like New Orleans, mm-hmm. I don't think they're gonna get that big. They can't really jump out to that big of a lead. If they if the like, second half where they're just gonna struggle every week, you know, we'll see. I guess. I don't know. That, I, think, just, I think Kansas City exposes New Orleans defense, and I think it's going to be a high-scoring game. I don't that even think it's necessarily one side, going to maybe. exposure. <laughs> the Chiefs' offense is hard to – like, the speed on that offense, whether it's Miko Hardman, who hasn't really even seen too much action aside from special teams, or Tyreek Hill, or Travis Kelsey, or either Le'Veon Bell or Clyde Edwards-Hilaire in the backfield. You Sammy can't Walker's really good stop too. him. Huh? I, that's why I, so solid too. I, I think yeah. defense is kind of negated here, especially because you, you just kind of highlighted all the Kansas City Kansas City's offensive weapons. I think defensive is kind of negated. What are they going to do? You, you're not going to stop all four of them. You're not. You're going to one of them's going to beat you, and it's going to you know Kansas, Mahomes is going to do it. And I, I don't think Kansas City's defense is good enough to kind of contain whoever is throwing or running the football. I think Taysom Hill's two, uh, the factor with his legs is, is it plays a huge component. And I, I kind of think New Orleans can keep this within two points and it, 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 it's just a field goal to win it and just give you the, the little extra it. push. I have a hot take. Half, second half starts. Chiefs are up 17 to six. Who steps after quarterback for the New Orleans Saints, but Jameis Winston. It's in fact to a comeback. I don't think win. it makes a difference. It doesn't make a difference for me. <laughs> James hit over four fifty and two touchdowns in the second half. Wow. Somebody, uh, somebody pissed in and the, the and this the morning. Chunk. Yeah, it's a little, that's, that's a little somebody much, but talk. I don't want to hear about this game anymore. Somebody else talk. Let's let's get another pick going here. I can uh, let me let me look through this board here and see what I like. All right, I'll go. Okay. Yeah. All right, so. This pick, like, really hurts me to my core. Um, and that's going to be the Washington football team plus five and a half at home against the Seattle Seal. Well, actually, what's the status of Alex Smith? All right, he's questionable. He's playing. He's probably going to play. Because don't look now, but the since he's taken over for the football team, they've been a top ten offense. We know what the defense <laughs> – we know what all about say? the defense. We know all about the defense, but if that offense is all of a sudden becoming a top ten offense and maybe getting Antonio Gibson back this week too, Seattle can't stop anything really. I don't know if they're getting Antonio Gibson back. They just signed Lamar Miller off the Chicago Bears practice squad, which Good is baby. kind of a sign saying he might not. Well, could be safety blanket either way, but um, this team looks like it actually could be a good football team. <laughs> you know, they had like this slow start to the season, but sort of the rest of the NFC East. And the NFC East seems to have, you know, woken up and has the best record in football the past like three weeks or something like that. And I think five and a half, I would personally make it like maybe by a half point, make it six. But this football, this football team is, you know, I could see – them making some noise in the postseason with that defense and Seattle, like that, that, that front four, that the pressure they got on Russell Wilson, making ton of all over where, which we've seen this year, he has had problems with the turnovers from time to time. So, you know, let's, let's go watch football team plus five and a half, you know, it's why not? Cause they're going to like division. It. I like it. I think this line would be a lot closer if, um, he didn't just thrash the the Jets, right? Yeah. And if he didn't just lose to the Giants, I think this this line would probably be closer to like two and a half, three maybe. Uh, so I think you're getting really good value at five and a half. I imagine mm. it's probably going to go up as more. I, people I see do that think people... that Washington will win the game, or no, no uh, Seattle. Yeah, but it, it's going to be close. That defense is good enough to keep Russell Wilson in check. I mean, we, exactly. ju- we just saw it. And like you said, he's got problems with the turnovers. If he's if he's forcing stuff to DK Metcalf or if he's forcing stuff to lock it, or even if he fumbles a snap, we've seen that a couple of times. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, normally the center's fault, but like if those four dudes, if it's if it's Montez Sweat and Chase, uh, Chase Young and, and Jonathan Allen up in there, like you're like it's over. 
I mean, they have, they, they have. Chase Young is so good. He's <laughs> just, just, oh my goodness. He's he already gets, so. That Washington football team is no joke, but the Seattle offense is also no joke, too. When you have DK mm-hmm. Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, um, they're supposed to be getting Greg Olsen back. They have Will Disley. They have Josh Gordon, who also people forgot that has come off the commissioner's exemplar list. They have a healthy yeah. Chris Carson. They have and Carlos he this week? Hyde. Uh, he didn't play any snaps, but he was dressed last week. Um, mm. Listen, the offense is there. Russell Wilson is a perennial MVP candidate. He has the ability, and their defense is, doesn't have to really worry about too much because even though Alex Smith is back, their offense is just Terry McLaurin and, and Antonio Gibson and maybe a little bit of Logan Thomas thrown in there. The thing is, though, they're, they're, they've been top 10 since Smith took over. Like my, in, my problem in any, is, in any my style problem is look I at. don't trust the Washington football team to play catch-up. I think if they fall behind by 10 points, mm-hmm. they're going to be trying to play catch-up, and I don't think it's going to happen. Okay, I can see that, but I, I, I don't see them going down to start big. But, you know, we'll see. It's a good pick. I like the pick. Washington plus five and a half against Seattle at home. Sure. It's going to be cold, right? Probably. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, benefits to, uh, I think, benefits to Washington there. I think my, uh, my, my easy money this week is going to be New England plus one and a half uh, against Miami. Um, this has been a pro Miami podcast for the. It was going to be and make the case until you I, did that. I really? think you just. Really? I think you just triggered all three of us right there. Well, that's a that's a good transition. <laughs> My right? make the case it, is it, also going to be Miami. Was it really? <laughs> or I was well, thinking about it. At it's, least. it's it's a good it's a good it's a good transition and it's a good it's a good um I guess talking point. But all we right, see well, what Bill you, Belichick you, you does to these rookie me. quarterbacks. You got to convince me. S- I'm in the middle. We get to see. We have seen what Bill Belichick does to these rookie quarterbacks, right? Like he puts them in a mental pretzel, right? New England or Miami has had a phenomenal year. They beat this New England team last year, right before the playoffs. I, I just think New England is not probably the better team, but this is the game that they show up for. This Miami team that's taken runs of the division or almost taking runs of the division, if not for, um, if not for Buffalo, a uh, coaching advantage in Bill Belichick uh, and a rookie quarterback in Tua Tagovailoa. We just saw what he did to to Josh, uh, not Josh Allen, to uh, to Justin Herbert. So and I Tyler think Tua is a little easier that. to game plan for. So right, give me, me hear, give me New England plus one and a half. Let me hear you make the cases, boys. Let's hear it. Let me come on. I mean, I'll start it off. Mine was going to be Miami. I'm not yeah, let me gonna. Hear it. I'm not gonna take it anymore. I'll take. Uh, no, I, wanted, I wanted to hear. You, I wanted to hear your Miami argument here. I mean, okay. If we're not moving on to make the case totally, I'm, I'll rebut. Man, I'm I do want to hear a little rebuttal money. here. No, look, I just feel like at the Chiefs. I mean, the Chiefs game last week gave the Dolphins a little bit of confidence. I feel like they think now that they can hang with these teams. Like they just hung with the Super Bowl champions. They, I mean, two was what four or five games in, and he's walking off the sideline in the fourth quarter, like after not having a, su- a successful drive or they punted it back or whatever. And he looks so calm. He looks like he belongs going up against Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs. And that defense, it showed up. I mean, I'm not going to lie. It showed up. Like, the special teams didn't necessarily show up because Miko Hardman took – I mean, took it back to the house. But, like, I, I don't know. I just think this is a game that Miami can really keep that offense under wraps in New England. Like, I just – I think this is going to go very similar to the way that the New England game went for the Rams last week. It's tough. I see both arguments where Bill Belichick Mm -hmm. is a superior quarterback, and I also think this is a chance for Miami to kind of tell New England, hey, listen, it's not your time anymore. It's my time. This Miami team is unlike anything um, the Patriots have seen in the past 10, 15 years. Um, Tua did – was on the injury report this year – or this week with an ankle injury. I think he was a full participant today. Um, But who knows if that's going to be bothering him. Maybe they're just doing that to give him rest. Um, and the over-under is 41 and a half, man. Actually, while, while – um, well, well, funny you mention that. I'll, I can just move right into my make the case, which is happens going to be under 41 and a half. Oh, yeah. okay. And why is that? Because neither of these teams have what's called great offenses. What's and called a good have, offense. Sorry. Yeah. Or, mm-hmm. or they have – Great defenses, bad offenses. We just saw what L.A. did to, you know, the whole New England offense last week on Thursday night, where they managed a whopping three points, was it? 
I believe so, or six, something in the single digit variety. Yeah, and um, and as you said, with Bill Belichick against rookie quarterbacks, the Miami is not. I don't think either team reaches twenty. You know, I, I think the most <laughs> the most points we'll see in this game, the shootout in this game would be like a seventeen fourteen victory either side. You know, it's mm. going to be an ugly football game, I, I think. Mm. But, I mean, if you love defense, it'll be a beautiful game. But I think the lower this total is benefits benefits the Patriots. Um, and this line opened at three and is now going to – is now at one and a half. I think mm-hmm. – I, I don't know. I just think the – I think the Patriots are yeah, a better I'm actually, I'm in a, the team in this matchup. You kind of swayed me towards, like, you know – Kind of being iffy about this game, you know. I was right, all about Miami, see, you but see, you can you can see the Patriots defense like locking up mm-hmm. their wide receivers with with JC Jackson and Stephon Gilmore. And Devontae Parker might not play. Jakeem Grant might not play. Yeah, I think they both practice play, today, man. but like if they're hobbled and those are two really good corners plus two safeties over the top, like a pass rush just has to get to Tua and he's not gonna make anything he's not gonna make anything happen. I, I just mm-hmm. think Bill Belichick has the <sighs> Give me, give me the Patriots plus. Uh, hold on, plus hold on, hold on, hold on. Because at what 41. point we, we keep doing this? This is the fifteenth episode. I want of over. The year. I want over. <laughs> hold on, hold on. This is the fifteenth episode of the year. At what point do you look at the six and seven New England Patriots and stop saying Bill Belichick is going to take away X, Y, and Z? St- when he, he failed stops seven taking times. Away X, Y, and Z. <laughs> he I mean, did. He, he did to do it seven times this year. That's not true. There's he's, a talent gap. He's in overall this, in failed this. in his game plan seven times this year, resulting in losses. The, it's it's that's come, more the I'm offense like being players. subpar, like six and seven. Okay, fair enough. I mean, it's, I, it's, I just it's don't not, get it's, it's not Bill Belichick's really defensive game plan for the most part. It's their inability to score on offense. It is, but I mean, I don't know. You look at the Patriots like they're like some well-oiled machine going up against the. Now ten and three against the spread Miami Dolphins. I don't know. I personally, I, was... I, I still kind of like Miami spread. I don't, don't love it, but I, under I think 41. If, if Miami's missing their key weapons, or at least you're having eighty percent of Devontae Parker, uh, Jakeem Grant, and running back. Who do they even have playing running back? I don't think they're getting Miles Gaskin. Um, they have Matt Breida, who I don't think's playing. They have Salvan Ahmed, who I don't know if he's playing. Um, it's just Tua running around on skates trying to figure it out himself. I don't know what's going to happen, but I think it's going to hit the over because I'm an idiot. These teams right. played already, and New England won 21 to 11. That was, that was week one. It was week one. Uh, week two. Oh, no, week one. You're right. Yeah, I was going to say it was <laughs> definitely week one. All right, let's keep it moving. I'm going to make my case for the San Francisco 49ers minus three at the Dallas Cowboys. The Cowboys cannot stop a nosebleed running past them on the ground the run game is or the run defense is awful um and the san francisco 49ers are strictly a running team i mean raheem moster is questionable but he's most likely going to play i mean he missed enough time i can't see him missing that much time um yeah i don't know the dallas cowboys are just really really bad and i think their three and ten record against the spread shows that and the Niners are just a solid team. They play close games and they play their defense. And I just feel like the run game is going to just wear down this Dallas defense. Yeah. Well, I guess in the meantime, we can all take a, we can all appreciate Sam's little screensaver over there while he's away from the computer. It's I adorable. guess. Um, <laughs> I initially wanted, I, I did like Dallas plus three here, but I think that Dallas's lack of having a running game is going to severely hurt them. Um, Zeke hasn't really been able, hasn't really been able to get going. Um, but it is uh, Andy Dalton, who's an experienced quarterback. And San Fran looked awful two weeks ago or a week ago whenever they played Buffalo. Um, I, you're playing – you're starting Nick Mullins again. I don't know what I'm going to get out of Nick Mullins. And you're not – you're probably going to be missing Debo Samuel, so it's going to be a Brandon IU kind of game. This is also a really ugly game, and I applaud you for even making a case on this. I didn't want to. I wanted to take Miami, but – all right, who, has, who still has to go? Well, man, I'll go. Uh, go I'll make the case as I fix my mic here real quick. I'll make the case for the Cleveland Browns. Uh, I know I said last week that I don't bet on or Sunday against night football we're not gonna talk. We're not going to talk oh, about it's Sunday football night Browns. football. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Oh, well. Uh, we're going to, you know, pretend that never happened. Uh, oh, shit. That's Monday. That was my other one. Uh, mm, 
All right. Well, I'm going to uh, make the case this week. I'm going to okay. I'm going to take I'm going to take the Chicago Bears plus three and a half. Um, why? Because I haven't talked about the Chicago Bears since maybe week five, and I think this is the time to do it. Um, Chicago Bears coming off a huge win. Mitch Trubisky actually looked good last week. Minnesota does not have a defense, and I think that's why Mitch Trubisky kind of plays well. They're playing in a dome, so uh, weather won't affect them. Um, give me Mitch Trubisky on the road here. Chicago plus three and a half. All right. Oh, I took Indy last week. I'm going to do it again. I'm taking Indy minus seven. Uh, I know this is a, a Texans team that just marched down the field and probably would have beat them if it wasn't for a booted snap. But um, I think Indy's about as hot as anybody right now. And I've said this now for like three weeks. So I'm just going to keep, I'm just going to keep riding the train. I'm going to keep riding the wheels till the wheels fall off. So give me Indy minus seven is my make the case. Uh, they should have beat them by more the first. They should beat the Texans by more first time around. Wipe the floor of them second time. I don't think Deshaun Watson loses that game. He's going to be pissed. I mean, I thought the same thing last week, and then the Bears just embarrassed yeah, I mean... that whole team and the organization. Mm-hmm. Sammy, what's your make the case? It was the under. Made the under. I, already, I already talked about that. Oh, all right. We talked about good. Sunday night now. We're, we're moving on. Um, all right. Sunday night is Cleveland versus the Giants. It's at MetLife. In East Rutherford, 820 start. The Cleveland Browns are minus five, and the total is 44 for this game. Very easy. I'm going to make my, my pick for this one is going to be the Cleveland Browns minus five. Um, Daniel Jones is questionable for this one. I don't really care. Um, I'd rather take the Cleveland minus five now before Daniel Jones is ruled out because it's only going to move up and probably inch closer to like 10. So, I just in this game. We I talked see... about this prior to. We talked about it prior to recording. If Daniel Jones plays, this line is at five right now. If Daniel Jones plays, it probably stays at five. Right? Yeah. What does Daniel Jones do except fumble the football and throw for 150 yards? <laughs> he couldn't move was... last week. He shouldn't have played at all. Oh, cut no. the baloney! I don't. What do you there. mean? He was a sitting I... duck in the pocket the whole I game. I totally agree like, with Sam on this one. I trust. Like he Joe couldn't Judge. move. I don't... I don't think Joe Judge would have put him out there if he didn't think he was good enough to play. That's all I'm I saying. I think he was good enough to play. I didn't think he was good enough to play well. If you saw him standing yeah, in the exactly. pocket. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so that, mean, that means Daniel, a hurt Daniel Jones is still better than a Look, healthy Colt McCoy. I watch the Giants every single week, and the, he, he stood in the pocket on Sunday, and he, he looked from afar like he was the calmest quarterback in the NFL. And we know damn well Daniel Jones is not the calmest quarterback in the NFL. Mm -hmm. You want to know why he looked that calm? It's because he wasn't actually calm. It's because he couldn't move and make a quick, twi a quick twitch escape out of the pocket to evade the pressure. Impossible. So, so if he Daniel not, Jones he was not fully the healthy, there's no if way. Daniel Jones plays, you're taking the Giants. Is that what you're telling me? I don't care who's placed a quarterback. At five points, I'm taking the Cleveland Browns minus five. Thank you. That's it. That's all I wanted to say. It don't matter who's playing quarterback. The Giants are going to look. They're going to look bad. They're I'm telling you to take it now. When The second you see this podcast drop, this will yes, probably please. be already at six. I say take it at six. Please, please take it at five. And just, five just and take it. Just take it before it gets too high because – Yeah, like it's absolutely it. ridiculous. Like you got to take the Colt McCoy-led New York Giants this week. <laughs> just take it from us. I don't even know if I could wear this. I might flip it down. Colt McCoy revenge game this weekend, fellas. Sunday night in East Rutherford. We're ready to roll. Need the win here. They're gonna. I, I don't know. I, I, I as much as I want to like make that argument, like I, as much as I want to say that's a serious argument, I can't pick this game. Like, part of me says <laughs> that the Giants' defense is gonna show out, but also I just saw what, you know, the Browns just did to a very good Baltimore defense on Monday night. <sighs> I mean, I, I think that Monday night game that we watched it said a lot about the Browns and Kevin Stefanski and how him and Baker mm -hmm. Mayfield are kind of going to mesh. I think the Browns as an organization kind of took a step last week on Monday. Um, and part of me thinks that we're going to see the Baker Mayfield of old this Sunday night who's going to throw for three interceptions, but part of me sees the Giants just getting ran over. Um, I don't think they get ran over. I don't think it's going to be a great game at all to watch, and I'm going to have to oh, watch. Yeah, no, it's going to be a terrible game to watch from really either side. You know, I could see, I could definitely see a Baltimore letdown. Or not a Baltimore, a Cleveland letdown this week. Like offense, offensively at least. I mean, I could see a Cleveland. Off the high of like, oh, we just put Cleveland. up 42 points against Baltimore, yeah. and we still lost. It's kind of deflating, mm -hmm. but – 
No, they're pumped. Uh, we'll, Are you kidding me? They're pumped. We're, they we're going to learn a lot team. about this Cleveland team this week, regardless of what happens, whether if they come out flat, we'll know that's the kind of team they are. Like they're a team that can't respond to really adversity, but if they come out and like beat the hell out of the giants, like, all right, they, they can respond to, you know, a heartbreaking loss. Like, so I guess if we're keeping tallies here, I'll, I'll join you guys with Cleveland, but. I personally will not be touching this game at all. No, you know, I'm going to touch this game. I'm going to not – I mean, I took Cleveland plus – or minus three, but I'm actually going to take, I think, the under – or actually, I was going to say over, but I was saying under in my mm. head. But I think the over is going to be a good play. I think this is kind of a game where both defenses forget how to play. Um, I, I don't and, quite see that happening. <laughs> I, I think Cleveland's going to easily get two touchdowns on the ground. Um, I think the Giants maybe put up 14 f- points ish, and I think Cleveland does the rest of the scoring, and I think it's going to be kind of gross. If there's a total play I, here, yeah. Gender, but well, I just I, I, I have really nothing to add for this game. No, I mean this is going to be the game where you look at it, and before we move on, just like the Giants' defense has played really, really well against the run, and I feel like on Monday morning we're going to look at this and be like, the Giants' defense has been really good against the run all year, but where were they last night? And Nick Chubb is going to Most teams don't have two dancing. running backs of Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt's. Slack. Like no, the two Giants running backs that could arguably be top like, 10, 15 running backs in the league. If they were yeah. – you could say uh, – if you told me both those guys are top 15 at, with Chubb being in the top 10 and Hunt being like 15th or 14th. Like, sure I would argue Chubb's top five. I wouldn't fight you. I wouldn't fight you. Absolutely. If you told me Kareem Hunt is top 10, I wouldn't fight you either. We've seen mm-hmm. what he's done. I'm before, telling you, you know? I, I just think yeah. the Giants are going to get gashed. I think they're going to they're gonna give up around 30 mm-hmm. points, and the Giants might only score 14. I, I don't see the yeah. defense being the issue here. Like, if, if Cleveland, Cleveland could cover, and, and I think they could score 17 points and still cover this game, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Well, see, if Cleveland's smart, they're not going to put the game in Baker Mayfield's hands. They're going to put the game in Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt's hands. And if you're doing that, I think, it's gonna be ugly. It's not gonna be fun to watch. If that's you know? the case, it'll get ugly late just because you know the Giants defense can only like hold for so long. You can't you can't stop the run when you're on the field for 48 minutes. So right, let's go to Monday. Let's oh god, another gross Monday. game. Another terrible game. <laughs> Pittsburgh at Cincinnati. It's 8 15. Which Pittsburgh. is on most Saturday games. Probably. Uh Pittsburgh are <laughs> 12 and a half point favorites, and the total is set at 40 and a half. That's that um, is so low. Yeah, if I had to – look, I don't want to touch this game. I'm not going to touch this game. If I had to, <laughs> I, w- I would go Pittsburgh on the spread and the under on the total. I don't that's really why, want to talk about this. I, that's why my, my pick for this game is actually going to be a teaser. It's going to be a Pittsburgh minus six and under 46 and a half teaser. You know, if you're doing a normal six point teaser there, like it's I, I I could definitely see like Pittsburgh's offense just not showing up and since he like backdoor covering that twelve and a half point, thirteen point spread, whatever you get it at. So but I mean, yeah, since he is they're not good. Especially like, without without Joe Burrow, they're nothing. The defense still isn't good. Pittsburgh's offense still is not good. Like they can't they can't run the ball. I need it's, I need one of you to drive to my house and smack me across the face because I am going to take Cincinnati plus 12 and a half here. I think it's too big, and I don't believe in the Pittsburgh. I know there's so, it's so many points. Why so I don't want to take like it's a lot. It's points. a lot of points. I don't trust Pittsburgh's offense at all. We saw mm-hmm. what they did last week. They run the ball maybe five times a game, and they just do little dinks and dunks and hopefully get it up the field. Um, the last time they played, the Bengals played – the Pittsburgh Steelers, it was 36 to 10. I mean, granted, you're not covering the spread there, but the Bengals kind of found something and that they didn't have Joe Burrow that game either. And they were playing in in Pittsburgh. Now you're playing in Cincinnati. You're playing at home. You're kind of going to be more prepared than last time. Pittsburgh is kind of pissed. They just lost twice. Um, Yeah. I guess give me Cincinnati plus 12 and a half in the over. And I feel like now – also, thinking, I, I, I could see a pissed-off Pittsburgh team because I feel like now people are like, all right, it's but I'm KC not, and I'm Buffalo. I'm not scared of their off- – I'm not scared of their offense. They could be pissed off as much as they want, but I'm not scared of their offense. You hit Ben Roethlisberger twice, he's just going to start throwing little dinks to, to, to Deontay Johnson. He's, he's talking about him. hanging him up now. It's like it's – we're getting that Listen, classic, I, you know, I banged up Ben. If my statistic source is right, which is myself on Twitter and other places, I think the Pittsburgh Steelers <laughs> have – the team has the most – 
most drops in the entire NFL, which doesn't bode well for a team that all they do is short pass. And when they played the Washington football team, I remember watching it and even the announcers were calling it. One of those tipped passes was going to end in an interception. And about five minutes later. <laughs> and it did. And I think it's going to happen again here. And give me Cincinnati plus 12 and a half. Give it to me. I'm going to hate my life for it. Give it to me. I'm taking Cincinnati too. I'm with you. Um, I think the facade yeah. – is uh you ever see the you think you ever see the Wizard of Oz where like they uh they, they roll up into the, the palace never heard of the Wizard of Oz okay. <laughs> <laughs> where, they, where they where they roll up into um I haven't seen this movie in so long where they roll up into like the palace or whatever and it's like the dude like on the wall and it's like well, they're, they're oh, technically yeah. in the, the emerald they're in the emerald city if if whatever. you want to be technical whatever Very and uh, you know Oz comes in and you're you're looking at this big fucking head on a you know ornate thing and it's like i am the pittsburgh steelers and then you pull the curtain back a little bit and it's like oh that's 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 the pittsburgh steelers so yeah he looks like stick <laughs> i think they, like i think Nick. they look big and i think they're big and scary but i don't think they're as uh as good as an 11 and 0 team at that time you know should have been and now and it's kind of you've seen that the past two weeks it. yeah now we're kind of seeing it the offense I tried to tell you guys last week off. when when you all took yeah. the steelers last week on sunday night and i took the bills try telling you I tried you tried. The the offense is the offense is sputtering. The defense <laughs> is getting hurt. I think Cincinnati has had a decent string of three the past three, four games. They don't blitz, so Ben Roethlisberger not having the ball in his hands for like half a second or whatever, however long it takes for him to throw isn't gonna matter. They're gonna drop back and they're gonna let you play in front of them. Man, um, I want I want to bring up something real quick, and I don't know how either of I don't know how I feel about this. I don't know how you feel about this, but Brandon Allen exited last week against the Dallas Cowboys with a bum knee. He is considered day-to-day, and Ryan Finley played for him last week and went one for seven. Um, huh. <laughs> this is not going to end well for our no. picks. No. But, you know, they brought Brandon Allen off the scrap heap to play quarterback. The uh, What's his name? What was the backup? Oh, I'm name? sorry, Brian. Fin- I'm sorry, Ryan Finley went one for two for five yards. I hate. I, I hate sorry. to correct myself. Ryan Ryan fin- Ryan Finley was the backup to Joe Burrow, right? And they brought Brandon so. Allen off the scrap heap to play. So like I they obviously so, yeah. saw something in in Finley to have him as the the backup in the first place behind Joe Burrow. So, I mean, I don't I don't think if if this line goes higher because of oh, please a, him go even better. Give yeah, go higher. higher. Yeah. Points. No, I'm taking Cincinnati. So two on Cincinnati, two on a. Uh, Pittsburgh, two on Pittsburgh. This is a division stick. game too. Division games are always close. Thank you. Normally close. So, go ahead, stick. All you right, just, you could you could talk because you've been on mute the whole time. I'm not muted. Um, you were before. You were I before. Was? Yeah, well, yeah. You were. I could on, we can tell. We're on Zoom right now. Hashtag ad. Um, we're on Zoom right now. <laughs> not an ad. <laughs> not they don't pay us. Ad. It's not an ad. <laughs> If somebody wants to sponsor this to to put to put our four faces up on a screen so we can put this podcast out, yeah, we'll we'll switch Zoom. There's no brand loyalty here unless you want to sponsor us. I'll put a I'll then put we'll a, get brand, I'll put a brand on my forehead. For, yeah, for man, recording we're free advertising. I will wrap my Pornhub. car in whatever you want to wrap my car in. Yeah. If you want to pay me money right. to advertise your business, all right, all right, go ahead, six. Sorry, Close to take us home, stick. All right, that wraps up this episode of the Caps on Sports podcast. Check us out on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, website, Caps on Sports, CapsOnSports.com. Um, for myself, Tyler Bloomstick, Nick Tobias, Anthony Mano, and Sam Meehan. We'll see you next yes. week. Yes.